Hey everyone, Almir here at Overkill. I'm one of the producers here at the studio and uh, with me I have none other than Saul Gascon, the executive producer on Overkill's The Walking Dead. Hello, Hello guys. Sal. Hello Almir. Hey, good seeing you. How Same. are you doing? You had a good day? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Working hard and uh, in a very cool game, right? Yeah, so what, sure. can, what else can I ask? How was your Gamescom? It was great, dude. Uh, we just came back, myself and a dozen of the other crew members here at the studio. Because you know, when we when we fly out to these shows, right, to showcase our games, we bring the developers with us, and I think that's so cool. And uh, Gamescom, for those of you who don't know, is a super cool show. It's based out of Cologne in Germany. It's three hundred and fifty thousand visitors on the same venue. We had a big booth in Hall 9, uh, 36 stations where people could play the game together. We had lines for hours, people who came over and tried it over and over again. And actually, we have some footage with us from the show that I'd like to show the viewers. Do That's you cool. mind? Yeah. yeah all right, I'm let's excited. have a look. It's easy to learn, but I, I saw like a crafting system, so... There's like a ton of stuff that you have to learn even, even more to enjoy the game fully, so I'm into it. Quite interesting, but very difficult. So to yeah, to talk with each other and yeah, to find a solution and um, decide where to go. You are, you are really limited on ammunition, so you really have to think about if you want to shoot the zombies or beat them up with your uh, melee weapon. So uh, yeah, it was kind of tactical. So it was pr uh, pretty, pretty fun. And it was a lot of pressure you had because the foundation was very um, short and you had to search for the resources. And it was uh, actually very, very fun. The graphic was looking very cool and it felt good to play. I see. Yeah, my, I, my heartbeat uh, was really <laughs> through the roof. Yeah, actually. <laughs> That's awesome. uh, it was uh, quite fun. Uh, it was uh, surprisingly uh, stealthy and you have to be very careful what you're doing and really watch uh, about your teammates and um, yeah it was really, uh, really fun i'm so hyped for it when it comes out when it comes out i'll directly buy it All right, that was uh, that was it. That was Gamescom. Pretty cool, right? It's very cool. Like seeing yeah. people reacting like that. It was crazy. It was twelve hour shift, twelve hour uh, twelve hour days. You know, for the entire crew on site. There were so many people lining up to play the game, and like you saw in the clip, you know, they had fun. Mm. They had to had to work together, and it was challenging. You know, in all the right ways, which is exactly what we're trying to aim for with the game, right? Yeah, exactly. And for us, it's very exciting. Like. Uh, we were just talking about it before, right? Like yeah, like when developers. we when we came back to Stockholm uh, with the rest of the crew who were at Gamescom, we we usually do it like you said, like uh, we we uh, sit down together, everyone in the team, and we go, how was the show? Uh, what happened? So can you tell me what did the, the crew who were at Gamescom say to the rest of the dev team back home? Yeah, I think that back? the biggest takeaway we got, right, is uh, what you said. People had fun. People was excited. Mm. Uh, a lot of people died too, which mm. was cool too, like seeing them screaming and whatnot. Uh, but you know, like uh, we work a bit like a family here at mm. Service, right? So uh, that crew that was there at Gamescom uh, explained to the rest, like this is our experience, right? Yeah. And the biggest takeaway is that, is that, you know, the how people reacted to what we've created, right? Mm. And this is something that really motivates us, like as developers, to go like, oh my god, you know, because we have fun when we play, right? Yeah. But when you see others having fun, is when you really go like, okay, we are, we have something really good here. Yeah. Right? And, you know, we took a lot of notes from all the feedback. Because yeah, the cool thing is that at the show, we have different types of developers, right? Mm -hmm. You have everything from QA to artists, animators, programmers, being on the show floor, watching people play the game, taking notes themselves, you know, getting good arguments to go back home to the team <laughs> yeah. and go, I told you so, this is why we had to change that thing, you yeah. know, which is great. That, that is very cool. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that uh, also there was 
you know, this uh, anecdota, right? Mm. That uh, some guy was, did it like 12 times? I don't know how many times, yeah, like, yeah, right? Yeah, almost a dozen times they, they came back and wanted to play again, which With is crazy. Five, five hour waits. Yeah, which is pretty nuts, so. yeah. But it's it's great. It's it's uh, you know for us. I think it's just so great to see people having fun with it, you know. And uh, and uh, you know every day we come one day closer to launch, so it's very exciting. Mm -hmm. And for those of you who couldn't be at Gamescom, don't worry about it. We got you covered. Uh, what we're gonna do here today during this developer stream is that we're actually gonna go through the underpass level, the underpass mission that you got to see at Gamescom if you were there. And uh, none other than Saul himself will take us through it and uh, tell us what we're seeing and yeah. help us understand more about Overkill's The Walking Dead and why it's such a cool game. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, so, yeah. so uh, should we start? Yeah, let's go. Let's, yeah. let's show it. So what you can see here, this is West End Underpass and the family is a rival faction that is attacking our, our camp, right? They want our resources, our food, right? And then um, they've been attacking us for a while. So right now we decided to go and retrieve the radio so yeah. we can... And this is the radio, right? The this is the radio. Mm -hmm. This is uh, the pieces that we will need to steal, right? Mm. And then uh, to steal that radio, uh, what we want to achieve with that is like basically hear what they're doing so mm. we can be ready if they attack us again, right? Yeah. But, you know, as you can see here, like, uh, it's not going to be easy to mm. get to their base mm. uh, because uh, obviously everything is packed with walkers. Right? Yeah. Yeah, the streets are crowded with them and swarmed yeah. with them. Exactly. And then, um, as you can see here, like, uh, well, the environments look beautiful. Yeah. yeah. I think it's, it's so cool to see, you know, day by day how, how the how every part of the game becomes more and more polished as we come close exactly. to launch. It's so cool. So. The, the, the point of the mission then is that the, the group of survivors that we play as are supposed to reach that tower that you could see exactly. in the distance. Exactly. This is the, the uh, let's say, the camp that they build around it, uh -huh. right? And then uh, we will need to sneak through. Mm. Well, you actually can choose however you want it, but in this uh, playthrough you will see us trying to sneak through. Cool. Uh, and here we go. There we start here. All right. And uh, right now we're seeing Aiden play, right? He has a silenced pistol. Exactly. It's important, like uh, any noise that you generate in the game. Mm. Uh, as you can see in the top, there is a what we call a hordometer. Yeah. And then any noise that you make will actually trigger this, right? Mm -hmm. And then when you reach a specific amount, like you made too much, too much noise, basically, mm -hmm. um, zombies will start being attracted to the to the area, right? So. Yeah, okay. Right now you will see that there is walkers everywhere. Yeah. Uh, but uh, if we fuck up and then we yeah. do too much noise, <laughs> yeah. this is not going to be beautiful, right? And we saw we saw one walker with like a super heavy armor. What was that about? Yeah, that's uh so as you know the 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 army has tried to to contain the infection, right? Yeah. Uh, in uh, Washington DC, yeah. uh, there is still some uh, some cops that were just you know turned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, in the so, middle. So, so, so some cops have have more armor on them. You have to exactly. pop up their helmets and stuff like that. Exactly, and then cool. you know pop up the helmet, and then as uh, as uh, every walker, right? The only way to kill them is, is to actually pop hit them in the head. Brain. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I think we're uh, at our first puzzle here in the missions because all the missions have, have puzzles in them, right? Yes. And many of them uh, have co-op elements where you have to work together in order to overcome them. Can you tell me uh, about this one? Yeah, so here uh, the team finds a door that is blocked that uh, basically blocks the progression. Mm -hmm. So then uh, there is a forklift near to it. So what the team is going to try to do is uh, get it back up, right? Running yeah. again, so then they can lift uh, that door. Mm -hmm. So as you can see here. Hey, I I see that keychain. What, what is that? Is that is that a Teddy Moo? That's Teddy Moo. Oh yeah. my God. <laughs> That's uh, our homage to uh, the Payday community. I like that. I like that. That's very cool. So um, the levels are actually um, built in a way that you can approach every situation in uh, the style that you want. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, here the team decided to divide into groups. Yeah. And uh, what's, what's the point of that, right? Because uh, in my mind, you should always stick together. Why would people divide themselves into units of two and two instead of being four? So it depends a lot of how you want to play it. We've seen players that really pack together in groups of four yeah. to make kind of a like Praetorian ward, yeah. like, huh, you know. Yeah. Uh, so they, if they get attacked by walkers, they are always sticking together. Yeah. This group here is a, is a bit more experienced, so uh, the sniper uh, took that path to take down those uh, humans, yeah. human enemies, in a small outpost. Uh, and the others are trying to clean up uh, the way uh, of walkers, right? Okay. 
So in terms of uh, the variety of puzzles that we have in the game, right? Like here you will see right now another one mm -hmm. that uh, that is also blocking the, the way, right? Yeah. And these are these are challenges that you're gonna find uh, while you're playing. They are uh, randomized, so every mm. time that you play, they are different. Mm. And sometimes are gonna be simple, sometimes are gonna be quite complex, mm -hmm. right? And we do this to regulate difficulty and to make, you know, ba basically every uh, playthrough yeah. different, different. Yeah, different, exactly. yeah, and and increase uh, and in just increase the player experience, you know, because exactly. when you start the mission, you want to play it again, you know. And if you do it, and and it, it becomes a different experience, you know, walkers coming out of different areas and so on. Uh, th that's that's the fun, right? That's the fun factor, right there. Exactly. Like, like think about it. Like, uh, you you play the level like yeah. forty times, right? And you can explain a story every time you play. So, whoa, what happened there? Aiden opened the door, closed it. He's yeah. barricading it. Yeah, actually, he's trying to, you know, like not a good idea, I guess. Yeah. Like, you know. <laughs> Whoop, nope. Yeah. yeah, that's nope door. Yeah, and he didn't want to go in there. This is an important mechanic, right? Like mm -hmm. uh, walkers, the issues come by numbers. Mm. So um, it's like an unstoppable force. Yeah. But you can slow them down. Yeah. Right? I think this is such an important thing, I think, to talk about that in, in this game, it's almost like you're not supposed to kill all the walkers, right? Because you don't have the ammunition, there's too many, and if you make too much noise, they will swarm you, right? Exactly. So, so that's why you have to use the stealth and, and, and uh, the, this ebb and flow gameplay that we've been talking about uh, in order to like move forward. So is that so being able to barricade doors? That's I assume that's one of the that's the, I assume I'm talking as, <laughs> as a viewer, right? But for the viewers who haven't seen the barricading functionality yet. The purpose of that feature and others like it is to help you mitigate the walkers, right? Exactly. Like basically, you are always between like two sorts, right? Yeah. It's like you have humans. Yeah. On one you side. You have walkers. Yeah. And, and they're, they're pushing into. And they're yeah. pushing each other, right? Yeah. So what you can do is actually barricade uh, your back, so yeah. you you win a bit of time. Yeah. But you cannot be like just idling around yeah. because at some point they will destroy the door. Yeah. Even if you barricade it. Yeah. And then they will come in, right? Yeah. So it's you are always. Uh, basically on your toes, there is always uh, a danger around every corner, mm. but you can try to slow it down, right? Mm. And okay. for that, uh, you know, you can barricade doors, you can use your abilities, mm. we give you different tools to, to overcome the dangers. Okay, very cool. So what do we see here? So here, as you, as you guys can see, um, uh, They're looting the team is looting the, this, uh, this apartment. Which is a big part of the game, to it's loot the environment. Yeah. Yeah. Um, why you want to loot, there is a lot of reasons for it. Uh, your abilities, you can craft them, mm -hmm. and you will see later like, how that works. Uh, but you can craft uh, different uh, items that you can use in the level, right? Mm -hmm. Also, cooperation is important. As mm -hmm. you see here, Aiden has marked one enemy, mm -hmm. and then a uh, grunt with the sniper rifle just took him down, right? Yeah. And now it seems like shit hit the fan. The 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 family has seen us. Exactly. So um, when that happens, like you saw those indicators on their head, right? Yeah. They have different alert levels. Yeah. Um, the the first one is like they are suspicious. They're like, okay, well, I think there is something there, so they will stare in that direction for a while. Mm -hmm. And if they if you don't do anything suspicious, they will just then you know keep doing what they were doing. Um, if they reach the next level, though, they enter investigation state, mm. so they will approach and check what's going on. Right? Like, okay, I saw something. I don't know if it's a walker or a, or a human. I don't know what's going on here, but mm. I'm gonna check out, right? Mm. And then, obviously, the last one is uh, combat. Mm. So oh, that's, that's when, a cool takedown right there. Yeah. Uh, you know, our team of uh, gameplay programmers and animators that have done a great job. Uh, mm. Like takedowns look fucking amazing. Yeah, they look really cool. And uh, what are they doing now? This is a, like a different path, right? In order to get to the yes. Camp. So that's a path that they they decided to take uh, downstairs, right? Mm -hmm. And as we said before, um, we want every run to be a bit different, right? Mm -hmm. So you have a user story to explain, mm -hmm. and um, you know, like you can get here in a lot of ways, right? Yeah. Um, depending on how you progress and and what is the what the randomization seat uh, chooses for you, mm -hmm. and. Uh, some of the cool stuff that I think is cool because it's in universe, right? I love features where we manage to 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 make them a part of the Walking Dead universe. For example, like weapons jamming, that's a really cool feature. Yeah. Silencers exploding. Can you tell us a bit about that? Yeah, that's actually a very important element, right? Yeah. Um, in terms of silencers, they are uh, 
uh, the main tool that you're gonna use uh, not to for your hardometer to go up. So it's important that you keep your silences at check, right? Mm. Um, they can get broken, yeah. so then you can unequip it if it's like if you see that the, you know when you're keeping yeah, longer. Yeah. And then your weapons also they jam if you don't take care of them, right? Yeah. So um, back at the camp you can go and repair the weapon, mm -hmm. right? So to make sure that the jamming doesn't happen. And cool. this is something that important, like yeah. keep your keep and your it, tools together. And say. in the heat of the moment, when when the uh, the noise meter you know goes to the top and there's walkers everywhere and the weapon suddenly jams, that's that's when you go, oh my god, what Th should I do? That's usually the moment in which uh, we hear more screams. Yeah, <laughs> right, because uh, you're shooting, you think that you have everything under control, and so it's like, Pack, yeah. oh, and then um, it's it's a very fun moment, right? Yeah. yeah. Can you tell me a bit about the different abilities that the characters have, like Grant's ability, for example? Yes, of course. Um, so every character has its own specialities. Mm -hmm. uh, Grant, for instance, uh, being a marksman, right? Yeah. Uh, he's a, he was a hunter uh, before being a survivor. Yeah, before right? the outbreak. Yeah. Before the outbreak. So uh, what he can do is like he can mark enemies, mm -hmm. uh, so they take extra damage, right? Mm -hmm. So every character has abilities that complement each other. Uh, so if you play in a team, um, you can actually, if you use the abilities properly, you can take advantage and uh, you know be more efficient, right? Mm. So uh, Maya, Maya, for instance, uh, has the healing pack, right? Yeah. And um, you know every character has its own, let's say, mm. our own uh, fortress, right? So uh, right now we're, I think we're seeing Heather. She she loves the the crossbow. What's her ability? So Heather has an ability that, as you can see here, mm. that she uh, she's a scavenger. Mm. So uh, what she can do is um, basically she can detect around more easy mm. um, where uh, all the loot is, yeah. right? or important items for the puzzle. Yeah. So it's uh, good to have her. Like if you are trying to find, I don't know, more food or mm. any of the resources that you can find, or you just simply, okay, where are the pieces for yeah. this puzzle, right? If you're in a hurry, essentially. If you're in a yeah. hurry. Yeah, it's or good to have Heather with you. You're surrounded with walkers, yeah. yeah. Now we're taking an elevator. Yeah, we repaired the elevator, so now we're going up. What's uh, that on the screen right now? So what you're seeing here is the crafting menu. Mm -hmm. So uh, Aiden just decided to heal himself. By creating um, a bandage? Exactly. Okay. And right now he's creating a new bandage with uh, the loot that he found. Mm -hmm. So um, you find loot in the levels, in the missions, and then you can craft stuff in the missions with exactly. it. Exactly. Okay. And now they're getting ready up. Uh, and his silencer is just about to break. Look at that. Yeah. One more shot maybe and uh, the silencer will blow, blow up. Yeah. He decided to save it uh, yeah. when uh, they were fighting zombies. Yeah, because right you now. can unequip them. Yeah, yes, that's so cool. Oh, I, yeah, they were broke. That's when yep. the silencer broke. So now he has no other option if he wants to shoot with a ranged weapon, unless he has a silent shotgun. But I know it's, it's not it's silent broken anymore. Too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so yeah. now it's uh, all out action. It's all out action. Yeah. Yeah. And as you guys can see, like every time that he shoots like the horometer goes up. Right? Yeah, on the top of the screen there. Yeah. Oh, and it's just about to, oh, there Boom. we go. There you go. The noise attracts the workers, right? Yeah. So this is a, this is a, a feature that really makes the game dynamic mm -hmm. and, uh, and different every time you play, right? Yeah, because it's like a dynamic difficulty, you exactly. could argue. It's like, a, like the worse you play, the harder it gets, kind of. <laughs> well, yes, so we, we punch you in the face, and then when you're on the ground, we we just finish you, right? No, but so, I, yeah, tell me, tell me. So the idea with it is that uh, basically, the, uh, with uh, this feature, the levels become super dynamic. Yeah. Because depending on with whom you're playing, yeah, the the gameplay experience is completely different. Yeah. Right. And even on your own, if you want to go like, okay, I'm yeah. a lone wolf, I want to do it because, on my own. Because, like we're saying, this is an experienced crew playing right now. This is an experienced. Uh, a group of survivors, yeah. so so their uh, hordometer is is nothing in comparison to what if you and me would be playing, for example, <laughs> then it'd be all over the place, right? <laughs> Probably, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we would go f full full guns blazing, right? Yeah, it we definitely. Yeah, I love guns blazing. So we see here Grant is trying to fend off the walkers coming from behind. Yeah. So right now, as the hordometer went up, um, they are starting to crowd the area, mm -hmm. right? They know there is humans here. They and the barricading. That's yeah. great. And then, uh, basically, right now, they, what they want to do is like hold them, uh, hold them back, right? Mm -hmm. But you know, th what is really, really fun is like this same puzzle. If you play it like with this horometer, mm. you're gonna be kind of okay, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, there's gonna be some walkers. You can control them. Mm. But if you really made a lot of noise, yeah, uh, this like the scenario changes completely. Right? Yeah. 
and this is like how it the, like, like this for example exactly. holy crap that's a ton of walkers yeah. so this is what yeah when the when the uh, when the noise meter the word meter is on the top yeah and so you're supposed to <laughs> solve puzzles while at the same time fending off hundreds of walkers exactly okay so uh, this team has, uh, you know, they know the deal, right? Yeah. So they are holding them behind the door, not to mm. get surrounded, because yeah. that's when really, really things get and Aiden's, uh, very hard. And this is we were talking before about, you know, the weapon families in the game. That uh, we have different weapon families that have different purposes. For example, with Aiden, right, his baseball bat fills a particular function in a, a crowded situation like this. Because yeah, you exactly. can push away and then you can push away many instead of just one. Exactly. Can you tell me a bit about that? Yeah, we have different uh, weapon families. Uh, for instance, Aiden's baseball bat is very good at crowd control. Mm -hmm. Actually, um, you know, you can fence enemies easier. Mm -hmm. um, and you can use like your light and heavy attacks to control the zombies around you, right? So, you know, you have long swipes that uh, push enemies back. Then you have uh, other type of weapons for CQC, like the machete or the pickaxe, mm. that are more for individual walkers. So then uh, it's easier and faster to kill one specific walker. And it looks but cooler also. I love the machete <laughs> when you machete just cool, slash a yeah. uh, walker's head off. It's beautiful. Yeah, I, the, the fire axe is also very cool too. Yeah. Like I really like it, you know. It's weighty and it's, uh, it's a bit it's, slow, but and it's, it's beautiful in a gruesome way. Because it sounds so weird to say it like that, but you know, when you're in, like, when you're playing and you're doing it, it looks so cool. Exactly. So the whole idea is that every weapon has its own purpose and its mm. own strengths and weaknesses, and then um, basically you need to find the weapon of your choice. Like, yeah. what, what do you like to play with more, right? And. Uh, we're also talking about the game being like a battle of attrition, meaning that uh, it, you have so little resources. Like Aiden for now, for example, he only has okay, two bullets left in his gun, yeah. one bullet left, and here we go, he's no ammo left. So how do we think there? Like, uh, w w that, that's part of the game design, that's part of the difficulty, the challenge. And it's also very much in tune with the universe, right? With The Walking Dead. Exactly. That you, don't, you have to take care of your bullets, you have to take care of your weapons, you have to try to be stealthy. 